Welcome to Level Up Your Writing presented by the Warminster Township Free Library. This video we will go over redemption arcs, what they are, what purpose they have, as well as some do's and don'ts when writing one. Some examples of characters who had redemption arcs that are generally considered to be good are Steve Harrington in Stranger Things, Zuko in Avatar The Last Airbender, and Snape in Harry Potter. So what is a redemption arc? Well, it's a type of character arc that takes former antagonists, villains, or even in some cases the protagonists, and makes them realize what they did wrong, and then has them take steps to correct their mistakes or the injustices they caused. It's important to note that a redemption arc is not the same thing as a redemptive act. For example, in Star Wars, Darth Vader has a redemptive act where he saves Luke, but it is not the culmination of a self-reflective journey that he has undergone over the course of the story. Redemption arcs, due to their potential length, can be much trickier to successfully and believably pull off than redemptive acts, which can be spur-of-the-moment decisions on the part of the character. Redemption arcs can be controversial, and many people debate whether certain redemption arcs were effective or good. Some common issues that people have is when a redemption arc seems to come from nowhere, or if the character has done crimes they believe are too heinous to look past. In addition, redemption is not the same thing as excusing or forgiving a character's actions, but if it's handled incorrectly, it could come off this way to the reader, and this can be something that's very tricky to navigate. So why take on the challenge that comes with redeeming characters? There are a few reasons. It may be helpful for you to question why you want to redeem this character and what purpose this redemption arc has in the plot or the themes of your story. Redemption arcs are inherently about the complexity of humanity. They can show readers that people are capable of change, that someone can feel remorse for the bad that they've done and to rectify their mistakes, or make up for the harm that they've caused. It makes characters more human. Redemption arcs are also a good way to show how dangerous another threat in the story can be by comparison. For example, if a former enemy has a redemption arc and then teams up with a protagonist to take on a larger and more unquestionably evil threat. Some tips to write good redemption arcs are as follows. First, if you know ahead of time that you want to redeem the character, this will make things much easier for you. You'll be able to weave in positive traits or good deeds that will later help you sell the believability of the redemption arc. This method of having a character do good things to signal to the reader that they are a good person is sometimes called save the cat or pet the dog. And having a villain do this is a big hint to the reader that they are a character who may be redeemable. The opposite can also be true, sometimes called kick the dog because only someone who is truly evil would kick a dog. Essentially, you don't want the redemption to feel like it comes from nowhere. It can be a surprise at the start, but at some point in the story it's best if there's some logic behind it, if readers can follow along with why this is happening and that it makes sense based on what they know of the character. When considering redemption, you first need to consider the character's flaws and virtues. Think of any potential triggers that activate those qualities and how they might tie into the reason why this character did bad things and also why this character is trying to redeem themselves. What are the events that set this development into motion? The main thing you'll need to remember is that the character needs to realize and understand what they did wrong and want to be better and try to take active steps to be better. Your audience also needs to understand not just why the characters did what they did, but also why they are changing their ways. The easiest way to get readers to want a character to be redeemed is to want them to and to want them to succeed is to have them understand and sympathize with why they did what they did. This often involves tragic backstories or a villain bigger than the redeemed character that they have to overcome. The character's struggle to be better should be proportional to what they are redeeming themselves from. In other words, the more terrible the act, the harder you, and by extension the character, will have to work to successfully redeem them. This is why you may see people say that redemption through death can sometimes feel cheap, or like the easy way out, since once the character is dead, they don't then have to put in the work to become better. But I will say this isn't an inherently bad or wrong choice, and there are plenty of situations where the character being fully redeemed requires them to sacrifice their life. If you want your character to truly work for their redemption, throw in some downslides. Redemption isn't always easy or linear, and they may take two steps back for every three steps forward. Ask yourself what challenges they face on the journey to becoming a better person, and how they overcome those challenges. 
This could take the form of other people not believing in them or not believing they can change or that they want to change. This could be their own doubts. It could be bad habits and patterns that they fall back into because they are easier than doing the hard work to change. And there's other more reasons as well. This week's writing exercise is to think of a villain that you enjoy and consider what it would take for them to redeem themselves and why they would do it. Then write a scene where the villain tries to do a good deed.